Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Survivor Geeks Virtual Survivor After Show. I'm your host, Alicio. Sadly, Eve's not here, but we have the host of the season, Michael, here with me. So what we're going to do is discuss about episode two. I believe it's called Seven Up. Wait, Seven. Here, Michael, what's it called? Uh, seven, seven Guys and Some Fruit. Yes. So we're going to discuss um, about how I feel about the episode, and I'm going to ask some questions and great that Michael's here because I was kind of trashing him the last time about, you know, I miss James, but Michael's doing a good job. So Michael, I just want to like make it very clear. I'm like, why Kaz? Why do you think they voted Kaz off? Um, well, there's many reasons actually for Kaz. Um, they didn't get a lot of time to talk. Um, right after the challenge, we got, we gave him like 15 minutes, I think. To like strategize amongst themselves and that was it so really Raul just threw out a name to everyone just saying let's vote Kaz because he said he was bold if you noticed in one of his confessionals he said he was bold he's like Kaz said he wants to he's here to win the game he's like that's a pretty bold statement so mm-hmm. I think that's the main reason why Raul targeted Kaz I didn't want to see Kaz to go um he's the youngest he's actually the youngest ever person to play mm-hmm. virtual Survivor so far he's 12 years old um, he's a good kid and yeah, just it, see Yeah, it was really sad to see him go so early because I was kind of pushing for him to actually like make it far, but I was definitely shocked. I was like, Aiden's not even there. But in this episode, we start off with an Aiden confessional. He received a steal a vote in my honor. Um, and he says that he's on the bottom. I have to agree with that. I feel like he is on the bottom. But I feel like he was able to, he's going to be able to maneuver his way to the top based off the events that are happening in the um, later in the episode. Then the intro starts, um, we see Kaz in black and white, everyone else in color. Um, and then we have Kabe. I don't know the other tribe's name, but we'll get to that later. So Seb, I'm not really a big fan of him. I'm sorry. Like the, it's probably shocked you. Maybe, do you like Seb? I feel like in like early game or later game like how you feel i think from a player standpoint well no i think from an entertaining standpoint i think he has that he's a he's a great he's a really entertaining kid i still we still call him the professor of potty mouth um but gameplay wise in these first couple episodes he's just not up to par he kind of reminds me of like a more aggressive version of you me like, you played the game but seb just acts like I mean, I don't know. For me, at least, I think what I have just a problem where it's like, I don't know what he's thinking because, you know, Zach did create a fake advantage in our season and it helped him the game. I think people thought he had the idol because he was like, I have an advantage in this game. And that probably got spread around. I mean, that's how I see it. And I feel like um, loose lips sink ships. And I feel like with Seb, he got to control his like talkative side because I know if you say too much, you're going to be a target in the future, later future. Also with his, I have, like, I'm going to talk about that when tribal hits, but like Goody, I'm sorry, Griffin vibes. Um, Moving on. Josh HW. Surprisingly, I thought I was going to hate him, but I actually turned out to like him because I was like, he's different. And he seems like more of a player I would get along with instead of wait what? at least are we allowed to pause it here what are we allowed to pause it here pause what the recording yeah <laughs> sorry we had to pause the recording because I had to explain to Michael that I'm talking about episode two I watched episode two I know who we went home but he thought we were talking about episode one for some reason but yeah like I said with HW, I actually started to like him. I feel like he was someone that I could have vibed with if I was on the season with him. But I also feel like he was also in a way on the bottom too because of, I don't, I don't know, I just feel like, like Michael, I feel like he had an ego that was not just vibing with everyone. And also basically with Jonah, like next person I want to talk about, says that they have this Apple gang alliance consisting of Michael, not Michael, Rebecca, James, Raul, Seth, and Jonah. Do I, I don't like majority alliances. I will say that. However, I will say Jonah has Kyle vibes to him. Like where it's like he can get 
things done and he'll get whoever he wants out if it benefits him of course so do you have anything to comment on that michael like for episode two wise nothing else episode two just anything about that or no overall episode two really good episode i gotta say um i think one of the big pointers from this episode is that logan and aiden are on the bottom those are like the two big ones on the bottom for kabe if you saw um the elimination logan was absolutely stunned you see no, no i saw i saw but we're oh. talking about like like the kabe tribe as a whole like right now like oh the kabe just... tribe as a whole i think they're um i think the hw vote wasn't the most strategic vote in mind i think each i mean i think hw for one was really robbed i think he's he had a, he said it, um he had a lot of potential and we why it. yeah why is it always the big personalities like oh i'm so early and i i don't get it i don't get it so let's talk about before we actually jump straight to tribal and just the elimination let's talk about the other tribe what's it called blue uh, it's the jerome. Jerome. jerome 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 okay like i'm call it blue then so nick mentioned seven guys and i quoted what he said he was like he wants to be this strong leader like he doesn't want to be the strong leader but he wants to be like someone that um people could go to in the future i called this on the last after show devin and nick for sure those two are tight i knew it i saw it it was obvious seared how do you pronounce his name <laughs> how do you pronounce his name i think it's seared so much here seared okay because apparently you were able to say it right so I'm i had no I had, I had i had problems with this too people would always tell me this even like like always in the game people, okay. people would always so it's it. seared seared so okay it seems like there my guess there's gonna be a break from that seven because that's a majority seven that ain't gonna last so we have my prediction with the final four alliance consisting of nick seared devin scott because devin and nick are close nick is going to be close to seared and devin's going to be close to scott however scott's going to be close to hudson and other people because He's in so many like alliances. He's in the final seven one. He's in one with um, Hudson, Tyler, and he's in one with Sierra and Victor. I I don't uh, I really respect Scott as a player, but as a viewer, I love rooting for the underdogs. But you know, let's talk about the talent. After seeing that, I can't root for some of the oh my god, some of the underdogs. I'm sorry, but how do you not know? that it was a yes or no question. And how did you not hear that, Michaela? Like, geez. What were your thoughts, Michael? Because clearly you were holding in laughter. I, I was, I was gonna say that. I was really holding in laughter. Um, I found it even, like, I mean, it didn't really matter ultimately, because I think her tribe got the point in the next round. I think Nick got the point in the next round. But yeah, that was one of the more entertaining parts of the episode. It was it was so, I was like, I cringed at that, but that was so funny. It's memorable. Um, I also want to, I think I skipped this. Tyler makes a fake idol. Like, I don't really think that has really been done before with us, at least, the way he did it. I mean, an Instagram account, he basically, I don't know how he did it, but I think he, like, messaged some people or certain people about this advantage, and it seemed like Jesse was the one that found it and I I'm gonna feel really bad because if Jesse has the idol, I feel like people are gonna he's gonna push for Jesse to go home or he's gonna try to save Jesse and keep him around so that Jesse feels comfortable or at least feels like he's in power until like Tyler's like cuts him off cuts him off. And then we have Seb make having a fake advantage. What's his advantage that he thought of? I don't think it was revealed in the episode. Will he reveal it later? Or no? Like I was gonna say it was probably like a legacy. I don't know. Logan didn't find the idol. I was really hoping he found the idol. I was so mad because I really like Logan too. I've stand him since the first episode when I found that when I saw that he was on the uh, minority side of the game. So he thought HW has the idol. Now that's what I don't really like. I don't know. I guess in a way, yeah. But also, I feel like HW messaged him because he's kind of in the same position as Logan and thought that's going to be a, the best way to do it, like get him on his side. 
let's talk about Rebecca finding the idol. I honestly think that was Marco. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like Marco and Rebecca are the same exact person. Like in this game, I just see Marco and Rebecca as a pair, and then Rebecca's the face. Like that's it. Yeah, I mean, she's she is Marco 2.0. I mean, she's a female Marco. I mean, um, Bake Street, you can stand all you want, but um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to it. I think Rebecca is someone who's gonna you're gonna you're gonna have to watch out for. It. I mean. I, I know how this season goes, um, and Rebecca, um, I mean, maybe she can do what Marco did in season one, maybe she can't, but uh, so far she's off to a good start. I feel like with her alliance not being really a target, um, however, I did find it funny that she wanted to hide the fact that she's Marco's sister in like the first episode, and she like talks about like carbon right now. <laughs> carbon, like the whole carbon oh, situation. Well, that was she actually, she carbon. actually, well, literally, um, in the first call, she pulled up and her name was Rebecca Foster. <laughs> so, I mean, that, I mean, that was like an accident or something like that. It I probably wasn't an accident, but like, you're not doing a good job hiding your last name if you let you pull up to a Zoom call with mm -hmm. uh, your last name in it. Yeah, and also, I, I wrote my notes that I was like yelling at Logan on paper to work with H. W. I also really wanted what you might call it. I wanted um Aiden to flip or something like that and work with the boys. And I really was hoping someone else did, but it was like Goody, like even Goody, because I feel like Goody's in the same position as these guys too. Like he's not in this alliance, and I feel like it's not gonna help them move forward. What would have been really great for me at least in this episode for entertainment wise. In my perspective, there is going to be four votes for sure. H.W., Aiden, Goody, and um, what's his name? Logan. Those are four. If Aiden used his um, steal of votes, that would have created a solid five, which means they could have flipped the game. However, that didn't happen. And that kind of sadly led H.W. to be the target of this tribal, and it seemed like people were trying to flip the votes onto um, Raul. Now with me, I wanted Raul to go home <laughs> for some reason. I just, I I didn't, I don't want to root for him, but I kind of respect him as a game player for making it farther than me. So <laughs> I have to. So at Tribal, um, you asked who feels 100% safe. Without hesitation, Seb just raised his hand. Hey, what were your thoughts on that? Like, you felt really confident after getting a vote from Last Tribal. Well, there, there, there was, I think there was two reasons why he rose his hand. W one reason, actually, I think he was actually trying to ask a question, too. Actually, that's why he rose his hand. But, um, like, I think he said right afterwards, I have a, I have a question. He's like, but I also think he probably would have rose his hand anyways, just because it's Seb. And I think... He has that arrogance factor to him. He, I think I, he has the reason to feel, he had the reason to feel safe at that tribal. He wasn't getting, and really, I mean, he did technically get votes, but wait, did he? I forgot. Um, no, he did not get votes. There was um, a total of two votes for Raul, which was HW and Logan, and the rest were for HW. Yeah, just I mean, then, yeah Seb totally had the ever right to feel safe. I mean, he's in a majority right now. Um, I mean, one of his best allies, I think, because they're both British. Have an idol. I mean, I would feel safe if I was him. But you don't need to really rub it, rub salt in the wounds to people. It kind of makes you. It, if 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 anything, he's tempting people to flip on him just by doing arrogant stuff like that. Yeah, and it's just for me. I don't. I don't know if I've done that in my season. If I have, oops. But like, I did not. I, I don't know. As a viewer, I was not liking it. However, Seb, I, you have a couple more episodes to like prove yourself as a game player, as a strategist, to me at least. But I'm pretty sure you have some things too rooting for you. So that's pretty cool. But I don't root for majority alliances. So out of people on Kabe, I'm only rooting for Logan as of now. And then I'll probably start rooting for Jonah. <laughs> but um, for the other tribe, they're doing really good with challenges the beginning. I'm really hoping to see that they lose the next challenge. So one, it protects Logan. Sorry, I'm like rooting for Logan. He's like the number one this season. Um, but also I want to see where their heads lie, even though it's probably going to be either, it's most likely going to be Michaela or Jesse next tribal. Like if it does end up them losing, because I do not, I just only see those two on the chopping block. And I feel like, 
Devin in a way like I don't know who Michaela was talking to but Michaela does have friends within that alliance so I feel like she wouldn't be the next target but she would be like maybe like you like the fourth or something like that but who knows that's just my um I think he's probably gonna go first if, if it's next episode and Jerome loses and then Michaela the next the next yeah Jerome I think it's Jesse and then Michaela like if that's how it works wait who else isn't part of the alliance i only wrote jesse michaela because that's the only two i've heard tyler actually i think it was only yeah i think it's tyler 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 no no, no. wait oh, no no tyler's a part of the alliance with He's a part of oh the yeah no, no 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 it's tyler he is not part of the seven guys yes uh, Oh, I hate majority alliances because it's giving me PTSD of my season when literally everyone on our tribe, besides me, Marwin, and Premier, were part of for some. I don't know how far they're gonna go. Um, was there only one idol hidden, and was it just anyone could grab uh, it? Yes. Um, there was one idol hidden for both tribes. Oh, oh for both. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Tribal, tribal idols. Mm-hmm. So. <sighs> In a weird way, I'm just, I think, okay, so in the next episode, based off who I think has the idol, I think it's Seared. Seared or something, Seared, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I think he might have the idol. If not him, then Victor. Also, speaking of Victor, when he was talking about, like, um, Michaela during the challenge, I was laughing. I was like, <laughs> I would have done the same thing, but in a nicer way because i feel like you know when i was watching his confessional i was like mm, i don't know I, I should laugh at this but i shouldn't because i was like michaela's too innocent <laughs> so yeah i don't know did i do you have any questions or like what my thoughts are from this episode or did we just cover all grounds all bases of it um I think one take, I mean, I already said it, but I think one major takeaway of this episode is Logan and Logan and Aiden are screwed on Kave, and Michaela and Jesse are screwed on Drummond, essentially. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. are like the two, they're like each tribe has two outsiders and they're both looking at, um, I want to root for Logan. Uh, I think he's, Logan is one of the best players on Kave, I think. Um, he's, he, I, I'm a big fan of him too, yeah. um, but this is a sticky situation for him to get out of for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if he could, if there's any sort of way he could pull Raul or like try to push Raul. I don't think pushing for Raul is like, in a way, a smart. Okay, for me at least, it it's a smart move if I was him, but it wouldn't be smart as a viewer because Raul has numbers. However, based off episode one, Jonah was kind of like hesitant about voting the way Raul wants to vote. There is one person you did forget, so probably they, no. Well, they could try, and at least I believe force a tie between. So what? What I think could happen? Oh you, wait! Oh, steal a vote four to four. No, but the steal right. vote as well. So Logan could pull in. He has Aiden. Um, he could pull in Goody, and he could probably pull in James. That's four votes. You think he's gonna really pull in James? James? Like, I, I don't, I don't think James is gonna get pulled in because I feel like, I don't know, James, he's just not there. Like, I don't know why. He's part of the final five. My question is, does he feel like the outsider or does he feel good with it? If he feels like he's an outsider, he's paranoid and he feels at the bottom of the battle lines, which I, th I certainly think he does. Um, mm -hmm. But if he doesn't, if he feels secure, he's gonna stick with that alliance. But even then, so they have a steal about that can still force a tie. Mm -hmm. But still, if they, wouldn't it? Wouldn't they still go home? Because the steal vote does not happen again, for, uh, like during the revote. So yes. say if it was a four to four, then technically two. Actually, unless they steal the person that they stole, they're you know what I mean. So say if it was like no they would still go home it would be like a four to two yeah i know it would be like it would be four and then it would tie and then on the revo this probably. is what i mean they should have done it this tribal that means they could have flipped this game around aiden if he makes it a jury he better use those connections in order to save my his deal vote you know what respect to aiden for not using his steel vote right away but 
I feel like it would have been a better move if he used it now. I don't know who's going home next rival, but I'm pretty sure he has high stakes right now. I think Jonah, I will, I do think Jonah's playing a good game. I think he's playing too hard out of the gates though. I mean, Jonah, I, he, he reminds me of Kyle. So I'm pretty sure Jonah's safe. He's I mean, good. You know, Kyle in his first season though, Kyle didn't really do anything in the premier. He kind of just was quiet the whole time, just waited to merge, and then he started making moves. Jonah, right out of the gate, makes a majority of lines. He reminds me, his gameplay reminds me of me, actually. Yeah. I, right out of the gate, um, made a majority of lines, got you out, got Rhaenyra out, got Marwin out. Yeah, Everyone. obsessed. We're obsessed. Still, but it's no, okay. It's no, okay. I, I, I made all these moves, and then when I, when I make it to merge, I go right out. I go merge boot. That's it. I'm done. Um, Jonah needs to lower that. I think he doesn't realize how much gameplay he's doing. I think the people in his alliance are somewhat, I wouldn't say sheep to Jonah, but jo they should know Jonah is a really good player. Um, and if they were smart, I would stick with that. I would personally stick with that alliance for like a couple of votes. And if a tribe swap hits and it's you, another ally you trust and Jonah, I would flip to the other side get Jonah out. I'd rather see them like break up, break apart, and see some of them play their own type of games and smaller type of alliances. I think for me, the best players on each tribe right now, I think Scott's on the blue tribe has so many connections and it's insane. Like I give him so much, like so much respect for that. And so, because I could barely have one. <laughs> um, and I would say, I hate this. Uh, I don't hate to say it. It's out of respect. No, no, no. Actually, no, I like Jonah. I think Jonah is kind of playing good, too. I feel like he... Uh, those are my two right now, as well. <laughs> yeah, Jonah and Scott. Um, I was I was leaning towards... It was between Seb and Jonah, but I feel like Jonah is more, like, cooler, like, with his game. more charismatic than Seb. Like, he um, knows what's up. His he... threat level, at, at least compared to Seb, his threat level is lower. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I'm trying to see. I'm making predictions as this season goes along. Um, I feel like Kabe has so much story with its tribe, within its tribe, where it's like I think one of the winners might be from Kabe, and I, I really, I don't know. I don't know who it's gonna be, but I just that's my feeling. I think it's either gonna be Logan if he is able to make it a jury, and he has like that underdog story, or it's gonna be Jonah who has like this top in a way top dog story and. It's just gonna, you know, I don't know. I guess it will clash well, but then I hope it doesn't because I just wanna, I don't wanna be bored. So, I mean, it's weird. They're the two real, only clear rivals as of right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, leader of the Alliance, one the leader of Minority Alliance. Yeah. But at this point, it's like the Minority Alliance isn't really anything. It's just a Logan. <laughs> and I feel like. Aiden, but I think they could. So no, it's not Logan and Aiden because Aiden clearly was like leaning towards Jonah at that vote, at least. You know what I mean? But there is a possible way that he could pull Aiden to his side. Or not. I, feel like, I feel like Logan and Aiden, the reason why I think Logan could pull Aiden to his side is I think Logan and Aiden are somewhat similar. They and are. Like, but I was like, Aiden. Yeah. I don't know. I, was, I, I, didn't, I just saw it as an opportunity for Aiden to actually do a move. But he just kind of, I don't know, he felt like the time wasn't right. Like, if it was me, you know, I would have just jumped right in. I'll be like, come on, let's go. Let's get that uni out. Like, come on. But at the same time, if you had done that, they still wouldn't have the votes because they needed one more. And they, I'm pretty sure they assumed Rebecca and Seb were voting with them. Yeah. Did not work. They should have gone Goody because they feel like, in a way, Goody's in the same boat as them because. Good, he's also not part of the alliance and it was just it's just an extra vote he's kind of like the rainier in the situation where good, you know that's what i was gonna say goody goods off kind of rainier vibes more than griffin it's like a mix of rainier and griffin i think i think yeah. goody, with all due respect to griffin i think goody is a better player than griffin but mm -hmm. i think he, he he i mean he's he's young like both of them um i think he's 13. um he's like a fusion yeah he's like a fusion of the two and I, I mean, I want Goody to do well, I, but I think it's going to be hard for him to make a move with these big time, with almost everyone on his tribe being a bigger 
percent. Also, because he is young, I feel like it will, you know, with all these older type of players, like older kids, I feel like it's really hard to actually do make like um, calls or like tough calls and for people to actually listen. But I also, but I was surprised that Raul got his way last tribal. So who knows? Maybe I mean, he literally just private messaged everyone saying no cats. <laughs> it was a dictatorship. <sighs> See, like, this is, oh, my, okay. Anyways, um, other than that, I think it was an okay episode. I will, I'm going to say it's, like, yeah, so. a seven. I'll say it's a seven right now because yes, three-point deduction based off my uh, elimination. That's it. But, yeah, it was a good episode. Yeah, I mean, I like the episode. Um, I think it was very, I mean, it had its moments. The Michaela yes, no question. I think the tribal was pretty good, too. Um spark a little mini argument um i like that aiden finally showed up uh finally like stop sleeping you don't know i i really want to root for aiden if you don't know aiden is actually go to ghost the same university as i do i can literally i assume no literally i was like talking to eve like before the first episode drop i was like why does um aiden kind of give me like michael vibes like i see the hockey i see <laughs> i see like just these things behind him i was like these guys are the same person and i don't know why i thought he was either you or cody for some reason yeah, my, my laptop actually is a little battery right now it's 15 minutes <laughs> okay well we're gonna have to wrap this up soon we're gonna yeah we're gonna wrap this up then other than that it was a good episode and is there anything you could say about episode three like to get um... the viewers you know more of a without case. spoiling it episode three i think is going to be better than episode two but not in the ways you think not in the obvious vote not in the votes i think there's something else that you're gonna like in episode three that will make it better than episode two okay. thanks for watching the virtual survivor after show uh stay tuned for the next episode it's gonna be great just from what michael said and also you're gonna hear some opinions from me and hopefully next week so yeah, have an amazing day or night. Bye.